Okay, here we're going to use source transformations uh, to uh, simplify a circuit and determine uh, parameters of a circuit. Uh, this is an example from your uh, Thevenin uh, and Norton equivalent circuit uh, handout. Um, and in this example, what we want to do is we want to find the power that's dissipated by the 10 ohm resistor. Uh, we can use the concept of equivalency or um, equivalent circuits to uh, to simplify things or, you can, or transform the sources into an easier circuit. Um, the key to this is to recognize that we do not want to transform the element that is of interest to us. For th so for this case, since we're interested in the power that's being dissipated by the 10 ohm resistor, we want to keep that 10 ohm resistor in place. All right? we, want, we don't want to do anything to how that uh, is connected. Uh, a helpful way to do this is to establish a ground reference or a reference node in the circuit. All right, so I'm going to establish that as a reference node. I'm going to always make sure that my 10 ohm resistor is connected to that uh, that reference node. Okay, so the first thing that uh, I'm going to recognize here is I'm going to remember the fact that we can uh, that uh, we have an equivalency between Thevenin and Norton circuits. Um, and the first thing I recognize is that right here, since I have a uh, power supply, excuse me, a voltage supply in series with a resistive element. That's a Thevenin circuit. And I also have a Thevenin circuit right here, a 16 volt supply in series with a 40 ohm. Um, both of these are connected at, uh, at a, a specific node. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, the source transformation method to transform both of these into Norton equivalents. All right, so uh, let's look at the 12 volt source first. So I have 12 volts in series with 20 ohms of resistance. Right, and I know um, that that's going to be equivalent to a circuit uh, that looks like a current supply. Oh, geez, sorry about that. With a uh, with a parallel resistance, and the trick here is that the Thevenin and the Norton equivalent resistance are the same values. So I know it's a 20 ohm resistor here that's going to be in series. What I need to do is determine how much uh, or what the value of that current supply is. All right, so the value of that current supply I determine uh, using Ohm's law. This has to be equivalent to this. So I use I for the current supply is equal to V over R. I'm going to use my 12 volts of uh, supply potential divided by the 20 ohms, which tells us that this must be equivalent to a 6 amp supply in parallel with a 20 ohm resistor. Okay. I can do the same thing with my 16 volt supply. That's in series with a 40 ohm. Okay, and I can uh, do my calculation. The current supply must be the 16 volts divided by the 40 ohms of resistance. When I calculate that out, I get 0 0.4 amps. So this circuit, the 16 volt supply, is equivalent to a 0 0.4 amp source, current source, in parallel with a 40 ohm resistor. Okay. So now I can replace the 12 volt source and the 16 volt source with their respective resistors with elements uh, with an equivalent circuit um, that is comprised of uh, these current sources. All right, so I'm going to redraw the circuit now and that's going to be a 3 amp over here. Notice that I've kept my 3 amp supply, my 10 amp, uh, excuse me, my 10 ohm resistor in place. All right. Those are in parallel with this equivalent circuit uh, that I formed from my 12 volt resistor, excuse me, my 12 volt supply and 20 ohm resistor. So that looks like a 0 0.6 amp supply in parallel with my 20 ohm resistor. And all of that is also in series. with my 16 volt and 40 ohm, which we represented as a 0.4 amp and 40 ohm resistor. Okay, 
So now I have all of these current supplies that are feeding current into the same node. All right, rem we remember that uh, from Kirchhoff's current law, all of the current needs to balance. So if all of that current is going into the same node, um, it's going to be additive to each other. All right, so we can represent, we can condense all of these uh, sources, these current sources that are in parallel with each other into one source. Um, so I have three amps, 0.6 and 0.4. If I add those together, that means a total of four amps is being provided by all of these equivalent supplies. So I'm going to redraw my circuit as being a four amp current source in, in parallel with a 10 ohm resistor, a 20 ohm resistor, and a 40 ohm resistor. Of course, this is just begging for us to um, reduce these into an equivalent resistance. Now remember, I don't want to transform my 10 ohm resistor because uh, that's what I'm trying to solve for the power across. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those two um, resistive elements and create an equivalent resistance out of them. So the equivalent resistance, or 1 over the equivalent resistance, is 1 over 20 plus 1 over 40 which is the same thing as 3 over 40, which tells me my equivalent resistance is 40 over 3 ohms. Okay, so this circuit now can be further reduced into a 4 amp supply in, that is in uh, parallel with my equivalent resistance, 40 over 3 and it's still in parallel with my 10 ohm resistor. Okay, now that we have that, we we'll, we can also recognize that this portion of the circuit looks a lot like a Norton circuit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to transform this Norton circuit back into a Thevenin equivalent circuit. All right, so I'm going to take my 4 amp source that is in parallel with a 40 thirds ohm resistor and I want to transform that into a voltage supply in series with a 40 over 3 ohm resistor. All right, so that means I need to determine the equivalent potential for this power supply or this voltage supply. Again, we use Ohm's law to do that. The power supply must be equal to uh, the vo excuse me, the voltage of the voltage supply must be equal to the current multiplied by the resistance, which in this case is 4 amps multiplied by 40 thirds ohms. And when I work that out, that tells me that the voltage supply must be 160 over 3 volts. Okay, so that means now I can replace this part of the circuit, my 4 amp and my 40 over 3 ohms, with a 160 over 3 volts voltage supply in series with my 40 over 3 ohms. So I'm going to do that here. Alright, so if I redraw that circuit now, I have 160 over 3 volts in series with my 40 over 3 ohm resistor, and all of that is connected to my 10 ohm resistor. My 10 ohm resistor, I still have not uh, transformed its relationship to the low side of the power supplies. So this is about as far as I can go now. Um, the next step uh, to determine the power is that I need to, to come up with the equivalent resistance for this circuit. Alright, so for this equivalent circuit now, my equivalent resistance is 40 over 3 plus 10 ohms, which will give me 40 over 3 plus 30 over 3, or 70 over 3 ohms of resistance. Right? If I have my total equivalent resistance and I know that my total voltage supply is 160 over 3, I can determine my total current that's delivered to, that's delivered by this equivalent power supply to the entire circuit is equal to the voltage supply divided by the equivalent resistance. 
and that means that's 160 over 3 volts divided by 70 over 3 ohms which is the same thing as 160 over 70 amps. All right, and then I use my power equation to determine how much power is delivered to this 10 ohm resistor. And the way that I do that is I use my power is equal to I squared R formulation. I know that my current is 160 over 70 squared multiplied by my 10 ohms. When I multiply that all out, I get 52.24 watts of power that's delivered to that 10 ohm resistor. Again, we could have approached this circuit using node voltage or mesh current method to determine the potentials or the currents through that 10 ohm resistor and come up with the same result as we, uh, as we did here. Um, but again, this was just to demonstrate how we can use source transformations to, uh, to simplify the circuit and uh, come up with an equivalent result.